everybody. It's Tyler here at IRI 2024, checking in with the Minnesota Sensation here. 3276 Toolcast, absolutely huge breakout year this year. Two regional wins under the belt. Congratulations on that. Uh, when I think your team, I think early on in the season, you were really one of the teams that really mastered the trap very early on. Uh, I remember making like a TikTok on you all, and it was just so cool to see your robot has such great capabilities. Good performance as well, too, at championships. So we'll be diving in more about Toolcast, some of their design philosophy, what they've gone through in it, uh, some key features on the bot you'll see on here. We'll be talking a little bit more about their software. So let's learn more about the scene coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Anyway, let's talk about your robot. I'd love to hear more about your design philosophy that you went into. Uh, so tell me more about how you approach the season that way. And of course, we got to cover this awesome trap mechanism that you have. Yeah, yeah, sure. So this season, we wanted to stay simple and small uh, to be fast. And also, we really tried to get the robot built like early in the season and not be doing a lot of rebuilding. And so we started out with just a very simple uh, shooter mechanism. That's a shooter on the end of an arm. And then we have these climbers for trapping. Um, so we have no pass off or anything special in here. We've just got, we infeed through here um, with these infeed rollers. And then we shoot out that side uh, it allows us to shoot uh, from both sides of the robot and also amp from both sides of the robot. Um, as for the trap mechanism, we wanted to add it on without adding a whole extra contraption. Uh, we didn't want to add too many motors or anything like that. And so we actually trap with our shooter and climb with these hooks. Um, these hooks here come around the chain and pull us up to the trap. Um, Let's see, another uh, interesting design kind of philosophy is we wanted to keep an open floor plan inside there. And so we have everything mounted uh, on the frame of the robot, the outside frame, uh, everything mounted on quarter inch aluminum there. Uh, and that makes it so that the inside of a robot is relatively open. We don't have to take things apart to get it wiring. Um, fixing the robot is pretty uh, simple. Our infeed is also modular. Uh, so if we need to replace that, we can just pop it off. Uh, pop another one back on very quickly. Um, yeah, that's about all I've got to say about that. Can we see what a trap cycle looks like on your robot? I'd love to see that. So this is when we're under the chain. Um, we come at it. We come at it from the back, we stick the arm up, and then we use these hooks and they go all the way down until they hit the limit switches down here. And then we just spit it out. Uh, we push open the trap door with these zip ties and drop the note right in. And so the whole cycle, uh, is done in less than 10 seconds. So I want to ask you, especially early on, what made your team want to, you know, during a match, you guys were doing all three of the traps during a match early on for that. What made you want to do something like that when you were approaching the game? Um, well, we knew that trap was going to be really important for qualifying matches uh, and getting that ranking point. And so we just wanted to be able to take control um, and get everything done. Pass over to Isaac, talk more about this awesome wrist uh, that you have as well too. I'd love to dive more into the functionality of that wrist, how it works, uh, and lead me all through it, Isaac. Yeah, of course. So this is our wrist mechanism, which really does everything. So if you go to compliance, we have the infeed rollers right down here. This goes into the shooter rollers, and then the shooter rollers kick it back to this. Um, so I can go through a, an infeed quick. And then it's auto gonna go into this, what we call our like in-match compliance, where uh, the wrist is protected and stuff like that. And then our normal shot uh, is like that, so we can shoot that way. And then if you wanna spit it out. And then our same side shot, where this will actually flip up, it's like that. And I take this. So that's how we shoot. Being able to shoot from both sides has been critical for playing that cleanup role, which as the meta kind of developed into a passing and cleanup uh, game, we've been very effective at the cleanup role, being able to shoot from both sides. In terms of amp, we have normal amp scoring with our um, infeed rollers. If you want to go to amp position, Sam. 
That's what our normal amp will look like. And then if you want to show reverse amp, we're also able to score amp from this side using these sh shooter motors. So from this one mechanism, we're able to do both functions of the game, speaker and amp, from both sides. So yeah, that's that's what I have on the on the basic functions. I really uh, like everything that's gone into just the the process and flow just seems so smooth for what your team has and reducing that complexity of like not having as many different handoffs and that sort of thing. I think it's really benefited your team a lot. So kudos to you for going through all that as well too. Uh, let's pass off to Sam, talk more on that uh, software side of things. I'd love to hear just a couple uh, different things in regards to how you're approaching uh, your shuttling, uh, how some of your different uh, cycles work, that sort of thing yeah. too. Um, so even though we wanted to focus on the cleanup role, uh, in preparation for IRI, we decided to tune in our shuttling some more. And the biggest part was making sure we're aiming in the right spot. Um, so just like two days ago, uh, we we're working on getting the robot to automatically angle to the right point. So our driver can pick up a note, drive back, just hit one button and it'll angle itself and you can shoot the note over. Um, super simple and yeah. Well, two cats, congratulations on a phenomenal season, by the way. Uh, really cool to see your development. Can't wait to see what you bring in future seasons. Good luck here at uh, IRI. You can also catch them at R2OC uh, coming up in a little bit as well, too. So we can't wait to see how you do and what you bring in future years. Thanks a lot yeah. for telling us more about your robot. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.